Book 3 The Book of the Divine Mother Canto 4 The Vision and the Boon Then suddenly there rose a sacred stir Amid the lifeless silence of the void In a solitude and an immensity A sound came quivering like a loved footfall Heard in the listening spaces of the soul. A touch perturbed his fibres with delight. An influence had approached the mortal range. A boundless heart was near his longing heart. A mystic form enveloped his earthly shape. All at her contact broke from silent seal. Spirit and body filled identified linked in the clasp of an unspoken joy. Mind members' life were merged in ecstasy. Intoxicated as with nectarous rain, his nature's passioning stretches flowed to her, flashing with lightnings, mad with luminous wine. All was a limitless sea that heaved to the moon, a divinizing stream possessed his veins, his body's cells awoke to spirit sense, each nerve became a burning thread of joy, tissue and flesh partook beatitude. A light, the dun, unplumbed subconscient caves, thrilled with the prescience of her longed-for tread, and filled with flickering crests, and praying tongues, even lost in slumber, mute, inanimate, his very body answered to her power. The one he worshipped was within him now, flame pure, ethereal tressed, a mighty face, appeared and lips moved by immortal words, lids, wisdom's leaves, Drooped over rapture's orb. A marble monument of ponderings shone a forehead, sight script and large like ocean's gaze toward heaven. Two tranquil eyes of boundless thought looked into man's and saw the God to come. A shape was seen on threshold mind, a voice. Absolute and wise in the heart's chamber spoke, O son of strength, who climbst creation speaks, No soul is thy companion in the light, Alone thou standest at the eternal doors. What thou hast won is thine, but ask no more. O spirit aspiring in an ignorant frame, O voice arisen from the inconscient world, how shall thou speak for men whose hearts are dumb? Make purblind earth the soul's fear vision's home, or lighten the burden of the senseless globe? I am the mystery beyond reach of mind. I am the goal of the travail of the sun. My fire and sweetness are the cause of life but too immense my danger and my joy. Awake not the immeasurable descent, speak not my secret name to hostile time. Man is too weak to bear the infinite's weight. Truth born too soon might break the imperfect earth. Leave the all-seeing power to hew its way. In thy single vast achievement reign apart, helping the world with thy great lonely days. I ask thee not to merge thy heart of flame in the immobile's wide, uncaring bliss. Turn from the fruitless motion of the years, deserting the fierce labor of the world, aloof from beings, Lost in thee alone. How shall thy mighty spirit brook repose While death is still unconquered on the earth 
and time a field of suffering and pain. Thy soul was born to share the laden force. Obey thy nature and fulfill thy fate. Accept the difficulty and godlike toil, for the slow-paced, omniscient purpose live. The enigma's knot is tied in humankind, a lightning from the heights that think and plan, ploughing the air of life with vanishing trails, man's soul awake in an unconscious world, aspires in vain to change the cosmic dream. Arrived from some half-luminous beyond, he is a stranger in the mindless vast, a traveller in his oft-shifting home, amid the tread of many infinities, he has pitched a tent of life in desert space. Heaven's fixed regard beholds him from above, in the house of nature, a perturbing guest, a voyager to its thoughts in constant shores, a hunter of unknown and beautiful powers, a nomad of the far mysterious light, in the wide ways a little spark of God. Against his spirit all is in dire league, a titan influence stops his godward gaze. Around him Hungers the unpitying void, the eternal darkness seeks him with her hands, inscrutable energies drive him and deceive, immense, implacable deities oppose. An inert soul and a somnambulist force have made a world estranged from life and thought. The dragon of the dark foundations keeps unalterable the law of chance and death. On his long way through time and circumstance, the grey-hued, riddling nether shadow sphinx, her dreadful pause upon the swallowing sands, awaits him armed with the soul-slaying word. Across his path sits the dim camp of night, his day is a moment in perpetual time. He is the prey of the minutes and the hours. Assailed on earth and unassured of heaven, descended here unhappy and sublime, a link between the demigod and the beast. He knows not his own greatness nor his aim. He has forgotten why he has come and whence his spirit and his members are at war. His heights break off too low to reach the skies. His mass is buried in the animal mire. A strange antinomy is his nature's rule. A riddle of opposites is made his field. Freedom he asks, but needs to live in bonds. He has need of darkness to perceive some light and need of grief to feel a little bliss. He has need of death to find a greater life. All sides he sees and turns to every call. He has no certain light by which to walk. His life is a blind man's buff, a hide-and-seek. He seeks himself, and from himself he runs. Meeting himself, he thinks it other than he. Always he builds, but finds no constant ground. Always he journeys, but nowhere arrives. He would guide the world, himself he cannot guide. He would save his soul, his life he cannot save. The light his soul had brought his mind has lost. All he has learned is soon again in doubt. A sun to him seems the shadow of his thoughts. Then all is shadow again and nothing true. 
unknowing what he does or whither he tends, he fabricates signs of the real in ignorance. He has hitched his mortal error to truth's star. Wisdom attracts him with her luminous masks, but never has he seen the face behind. A giant ignorance surrounds his law. Assigned to meet the cosmic mystery in the dumb figure of a material world, his passport of entry false and his personage he is compelled to be what he is not. He obeys the inconscience he had come to rule and sinks in matter to fulfill his soul. Awakened from her lower driven forms, the earth mother gave her forces to his hands and painfully he guards the heavy trust. His mind is a lost torch-bearer on her roads. Illumining breath to think and plasm to feel, he labors with his slow and skeptic brain, helped by the reason's vacillating fires to make his thought and will a magic door for knowledge to enter the darkness of the world and love to rule a realm of strife and hate. A mind important to reconcile heaven and earth and tied to matter with a thousand bonds, he lifts himself to be a conscious God. Even when a glory of wisdom crowns his brow, when mind and spirit shed a grandiose ray to exalt this product of the sperm and gene, this alchemist miracle from plasm and gas, and he who shared the animals run and crawl, lifts his thought stature to the immortal's heights, his life still keeps the human middle way. His body he resigns to death and pain, abandoning matter his too heavy charge. A thaumaturge skeptic of miracles, a spirit left sterile of its occult power, by an unbelieving brain and credulous heart, he leaves the world to end where it began. His work unfinished, he claims a heavenly prize. Thus has he missed creation's absolute. Halfway, he stops his star of destiny, a vast and vain long-tried experiment, an ill-served high conception doubtfully done, the world's life falters on not seeing its goal, a zigzag towards unknown dangerous ground, ever repeating its habitual walk, ever retreating after marches long, and hardiest victories without sure result, drawn endlessly and inconclusive game. In an ill-fitting and voluminous robe, a radiant purpose still conceals its face. A mighty blindness stumbles, hoping on, feeding its strength on gifts of luminous charm. Because the human instrument has failed, the goddess frustrate sleeps within its seed, a spirit entangled in the forms it made. His failure is not failure whom God leads. Through all the slow, mysterious march goes on, an immutable power has made this mutable world. A self-fulfilling transcendence treads man's road. The driver of the soul upon its path, it knows its steps, its way is inevitable. And how shall the end be vain when God is guide? However man's mind may tire or fail his flesh, a will prevails, cancelling his conscious choice. 
the goal recedes, a boneless vastness calls, retreating into an immense unknown. There is no end to the world's stupendous march. There is no rest for the embodied soul. It must live on, describe all time's huge curve. An influx presses from the closed beyond, forbidding to him rest and earthly ease. Till he has found himself, he cannot pause. A light there is that leads, a power that aids, unmarked, unfelt, it sees in him and acts. Ignorant, he forms the all-conscient in his depths. Human looks up to superhuman peaks. A borrower of supernature's gold, he paves his road to immortality. The high gods look on man and watch and choose today's impossibles for the future's babe. His transience trembles with the eternal's touch, his barriers seed beneath the infinite tread. The immortals have their entries in his life. The ambassadors of the unseen draw near. A splendor sullied by the mortal air, love passes through his heart, a wandering guest. Beauty surrounds him for a magic hour. He has visits of a large, revealing joy. Brief whitenesses release him from himself, enticing towards a glory ever in front, hopes of a deathless sweetness lure and leave. His mind is crossed by strange discovering fires, rare intimations lift his stumbling speech, to a moment's kinship with the eternal word. A mask of wisdom circles through his brain, perturbing him with glimpses half divine. He lays his hands sometimes on the unknown. He communes sometimes with eternity. A strange and grandiose symbol was his birth, an immortality and spirit room and pure perfection and a shadowless bliss are this afflicted creature's mighty fate. In him the earth mother sees draw near the change, foreshadowed in her dumb and fiery depths, a goddess drawn from her transmuted limbs, an alchemy of heaven on nature's base. Adept of the self-born, unfailing line. Leave not the light to die, the ages bore. Help still humanity's blind and suffering life. Obey thy spirit's wide, omnipotent urge. A witness to God's parley with the night, it leans compassionate from immortal calm, and house desire the troubled seed of things. Ascend to thy high self, create, endure. Cease not from knowledge, let thy toil be vast. No more can earthly limits bend thy force. Equal thy work with long unending time. Traveller upon the bare eternal heights, tread still the difficult and dateless path. Joining the cycles with its austere curve, measured for man by the initiate gods. My light shall be in thee, my strength thy force. Let not the impatient titan drive thy heart. Ask not the imperfect fruit, the partial prize. Only one boon to greaten thy spirit demand. Only one joy to raise thy kind desire. Above blind fate and the antagonist powers, moveless there stands a high unchanging will. 
to its omnipotence leave thy works result all things shall change in god's transfiguring hour august and sweet sang hashid that mighty a voice nothing now moved in the vast brooding space a stillness came upon the listening world a mute immensity of the eternal peace but aswapati's heart replied to her a cry amid the silence of the vast how shall i rest content with mortal days and the dull measure of terrestrial things i who have seen behind the cosmic mask the glory and the beauty of thy face hard is the doom to which thou bindest thy sons how long shall our spirits a battle with the night and bear defeat and the brute yoke of death we who are vessels of a deathless force and builders of the godhead of the race or if it is thy work i do below amid the error and waste of human life in the vague light of man's half conscious mind why breaks not in some distant gleam of thee ever the centuries and millenniums pass where in the grayness is thy coming's ray where is the thunder of thy victory's wings only we hear the feet of passing gods a plan in the occult eternal mind mapped out to backward and prophetic sight the eons ever repeat their changeless round the cycles all rebuild and ever aspire all we have done is ever still to do all breaks and all renews and is the same huge revolutions of life's fruitless gyre the newborn ages perish like the old as if the sad enigma kept its right till all is done for which this scene was made too little the strength that now with us is born too faint the light that steals through nature's lids too scant the joy with which she buys our pain in a brute world that knows not its own sense thought racked upon the wheel of birth we live the instruments of an impulse not our own moved to achieve with our heart's blood for price half knowledge half creations that soon tire the foiled immortal soul in perishing limbs baffled and beaten back we labor still annulled frustrated spent we still survive in anguish we labor that from us may rise a larger seeing man with nobler heart a golden vessel of the incarnate truth the executor of the divine attempt equipped to wear the earthly body of god communicant and prophet and lover and king i know that thy creation cannot fail for even through the mists of mortal thought infallible are thy mysterious steps and though necessity dons the garb of chance hidden in the blind shifts of fate she keeps the slow calm logic of infinity space and the inviolate sequence of its will all life is fixed in an ascending scale and adamantine is the evolving law in the beginning is prepared the close this strange irrational product of the mire this compromise between the beast and god is not the crown of thy miraculous world i know they shall inform the inconscient cells at one with nature and at height with heaven a spirit vast as the containing sky and swept with ecstasy from invisible founts 
a god come down and greater by the fall. A power arose out of my slumber cell, abandoning the tardy limp of the hours and the inconstant blink of mortal sight, there where the thinker sleeps in too much light and intolerant flames the lone, all-witnessing eye, hearing the word of fate from silence heart in the endless moment of eternity, it saw from timelessness the works of time. Overpassed were the leaden formulas of the mind, overpowered the obstacle of mortal space. The unfolding image showed the things to come. A giant dance of Shiva tore the past. There was a thunder as of worlds that fall. Earth was o'errun with fire and the roar of death, clamoring to slay a world his hunger had made. There was a clangor of destruction's wings. The titan's battle cry was in my ears. Alarm and rumor shook the armored night. I saw the omnipotence flaming pioneers over the heavenly verge which turns towards life, come crowding down the amber stairs of birth. Forerunners of a divine multitude, out of the paths of the morning star they came, into the little room of mortal life. I saw them cross the twilight of an age, the sun-eyed children of a marvellous dawn, the great creators, with wide brows of calm, the massive barrier breakers of the world, and wrestlers with destiny in her lists of will, the laborers in the quarries of the gods, the messengers of the incommunicable, the architects of immortality. Into the fallen human sphere they came, Faces that wore the immortal's glory still, voices that commune still with the thoughts of God, bodies made beautiful by the Spirit's light, carrying the magic word, the mystic fire, carrying the Dionysian cup of joy, approaching eyes of a diviner man, lips chanting, an unknown anthem of the soul, feet echoing in the corridors of time. High priests of wisdom, sweetness, might and bliss, discoverers of beauty's sunlit ways, and swimmers of love's laughing fiery floods, and dancers within rapture's golden doors, their tread one day shall change the suffering earth and justify the light on nature's face. Although fate lingers in the high beyond and the work seems vain on which our heart's force was spent, all shall be done for which our pain was born. Even as of old man came behind the beast this high divine successor surely shall come behind man's inefficient mortal pace, behind his vain labor, sweat and blood and tears. He shall know what mortal mind barely durst think. He shall do what the heart of the mortal could not dare. Inheritor of the toil of human time, he shall take on him the burden of the gods. All heavenly light shall visit the earth's thoughts. The might of heaven shall fortify earthly hearts. Earth's deeds shall touch the superhuman's height. Earth's seeing widen into the infinite. Heavy, unchanged, weighs still the imperfect world. The splendid youth of time 
has passed and failed. Heavy and long are the years of our labor counts, and still the seals are firm upon man's soul, and weary is the ancient mother's heart. O truth, defended in thy secret sun, voice of her mighty musings in shut heavens, on things withdrawn within her luminous depths, O wisdom, splendor, mother of the universe, creatrix, the eternal's artist bride, linger not long with thy transmuting hand, pressed vainly on one golden bar of time, as if time dare not open its heart to God. O radiant fountain of the world's delight, world free and unattainable above, O bliss who ever dwells deep hid within, while men seek thee outside, and never find mystery and muse with hieratic tongue incarnate the white passion of thy force mission to earth some living form of thee one moment fill with thy eternity let thy infinity in one body live all knowledge wrap one mind in seas of light, all love throbs single in one human heart. Immortal, treading the earth with mortal feet, all heaven's beauty crowd in earthly limbs, omnipotence girdle with the power of God, moments and moments of immortal will, pack with the eternal might one human hour, and with one gesture change all future time. Let a great word be spoken from the heights, and one great act unlock the doors of fate. His prayer sank down in the resisting night, oppressed by the thousand forces that deny, as if too weak to climb to the supreme, but there arose a wide, consenting voice. The spirit of beauty was revealed in sound. Light floated round the marvellous vision's brow, and on her lips the mortal's joy took shape. O strong forerunner, I have heard thy cry. One shall descend and break the iron law. Change nature's doom by the lone spirit's power. A limitless mind that can contain the world, a sweet and violent heart of ardent calms, moved by the passions of the gods shall come. All mights and greatnesses shall join in her. Beauty shall walk celestial on the earth. Delight shall sleep in the cloud net of her hair, and in her body, as on his homing tree, immortal love shall beat his glorious wing. A music of griefless things shall weave her charm. The harps of the perfect shall attune her voice. The streams of heaven shall murmur in her laugh. Her lips shall be the honeycombs of God, her limbs his golden jars of ecstasy, her breasts the rapture flowers of paradise. She shall bear wisdom in her voiceless bosom, strength shall be with her like a conqueror's sword, and from her eyes the eternal's bliss shall gaze. A seed shall be sown in death's tremendous hour, a branch of heaven transplant to human soil. Nature shall overleap her mortal step. Fate shall be changed by an unchanging will, 
As a flame disappears in endless light, immortally extinguished in its source, vanished the splendor and was stilled the world. An echo of delight that once was close, the harmony journeyed toward some distant hush, a music failing in the ear of trance, a cadence called by distant cadences, a voice that trembled into strains withdrawn, her form retreated from the longing earth, forsaking nearness to the abandoned sense, ascending to her unattainable home. Lone, brilliant, vacant lay the inner fields. All was unfilled in ordinate spirit space, indifferent waste, a desert of bright peas. Then a line moved on the far edge of calm, the warm-lipped, sentient, soft, terrestrial wave, a quick and many murmured moan and laugh, came gliding in upon white feet of sound. Unlocked was the deep glory of silence heart, the absolute unmoving stillnesses surrendered to the breath of mortal air, dissolving boundlessly the heavens of trance, collapsed to waking mind. Eternity cast down its incommunicable lids over its solitudes remote from ken, behind the voiceless mystery of sleep. The grandiose respite failed, the wide release. Across the light of fast receding plains that fled from him as from a falling star, compelled to fill its human house in time, his soul drew back into the speed and noise of the vast business of created things. A chariot of the marvels of the heavens, broad base to bear the gods on fiery wheels, flaming he swept through the spiritual gate. The mortal stir received him in its midst. Once more he moved amid material scenes, lifted by intimations from the heights and in the pauses of the building brain, touched by the thoughts that skimmed the fathomless surge of nature and wing back to hidden shores. The eternal seeker in the eonic field, besieged by the intolerant press of earth, again was strong for great swift-footed deeds. Awake beneath the ignorant vault of night, he saw the unnumbered people of the stars and heard the questioning of the unsatisfied flood and toiled with the form-maker measuring mind. A wanderer from the occult, invisible suns, accomplishing the fate of transient things, a god in the figure of the arisen beast, he raised his brow of conquest to the heavens, establishing the empire of the soul on matter and its bounded universe as on a solid rock in infinite sea. The Lord of Life resumed his mighty rounds in the scant field of the ambiguous globe.